Hi guys, it's Ben here and in this video I'm going to be picking my Liverpool 11 that I want us to be starting with going into the Premier League season. So we're coming up towards the start of the pre-season games, we've already got Mohamed Salah through the door and Dominic Solanke has also signed, we've still got a lot of business left to do, so this 11 will take into account the signings that I want us to make in the meantime between now and the start of the season, whether some might drag on until after the start of the season I don't know, but this is the 11 that I want us to have as our strongest this season. In goal is Simon Minile, the man who started last season, only to be dropped for Loris Karras early on, Karras failed to impress obviously, made a few mistakes, cost us wins against Bournemouth, West Ham, uh, and then was rightly dropped, Minile came back in made one cock up at Hull but other than that it was pretty safe pair of hands one of some really crucial points I remember the game at West Brom which I was at one big save towards the end after having a quiet game really secured the win there and there's plenty of other moments plenty of other big saves which really helped us secure a top four place he looks far more commanding coming to collect crosses and just everything about his whole demeanour just looks much better I'm more than happy with him as our number one goalkeeper for this season at least hopefully he can continue to improve and we don't need to be looking at signing another keeper for a few years right back is Nathaniel Klein now I know a lot of people haven't been particularly impressed with how he's kicked on since his first season at Anfield. I know last season there were times where he took some criticism. Some people are calling for Trent Alexander-Arnold to come in and take his place and I'm sure he will compete for the position this season and maybe in Europe and if we're fighting on four fronts Trent will get plenty of games but I'm not sure if Trent's going to be a right back going forward. I think he may play in midfield, we've seen him on the wing a few times. I think Klein remains a safe pair of hands even if not spectacular. I think it's pretty much a no-brainer. He's going to be our starting right back for the foreseeable future. Alongside Klein will be Joel Matip, the man who joined on a free last summer. He obviously had an injury play first season, very frustrating that he couldn't stay fit and form a partnership with Dayan Lovren, but when he did play he generally looked okay, I think he needs to hit the weights, I'm not sure he's strong enough, but he does read the game well, he's comfortable on the ball and you know his defending generally, his positioning is pretty good I think he's a little bit overrated by some of our fans like I say, he had a good first season, not a great one I think the fact that he was free obviously massively helps he's got no fee to have to live up to I think if he was a £30 million signing people may see him differently, but I think alongside who I want to be his defensive partner, he'll be just fine this season, as long as he can stay fit and partnering the Cameroonian at centre-back will be Virgil van Dijk if I get my way obviously we don't know if this is going to happen it's a deal that's going to drag on and on and on I think every Liverpool fan wants this guy to be partnering Matip at centre back this season I'm no different I don't think I need to really justify it he's been superb for Southampton the game that sticks out is a 0-0 draw against them that we had last season where he just wouldn't let anything through that really solidified him for me as a, one of the Premier League's leading defenders I'm sure he's been doing it week in week out whenever I saw him last season before he got injured he was just immaculate at the back he's got great physique great presence he's got a lot to his game as well he takes free kicks he's comfortable dribbling with the ball, he's got a bit of pace, pretty much the complete centre back and I'd love for him to be a Liverpool partnering Joel Matip at the back. Okay, left back, I'm going to stick with James Milner. Now I know he's again not the most popular fullback among Liverpool fans, people think we should sign a proper left back and yeah, do you know what, we probably will sign Andrew Robertson by the time this video goes out we may have already signed him but I know Jurgen Klopp really likes to just have Milner on the pitch, he likes that presence, he likes that leader out there, someone that's going to take penalties really well. I think he took more flack than he deserved last season, I think especially in the first half of the campaign he was one of our best players. You need guys like that you need winners like that in your team if you're going to be competing is he a perfect left back no and I do think Robertson will get a lot of games if he joins us but if you're asking me who I want to start on the opening day of this season it's James Milner okay and the midfield now this is where it gets really interesting for me I'm going to stick with a 4-3-3 so it's going to be a three-man midfield with two holding and one in more of a free roll. The two holding, first of all, Jordan Henderson, back in training for pre-season after a long layoff towards the end of the last campaign. He was just superb when he was fit last season. His passing was immaculate. His The way he just dictated the tempo of all the games, especially at home against the lesser sides, I think we really struggled once he left the team for injury. After a really diabolical performance at Burnley in the number six role, I thought his career at Liverpool was really just gonna peter out, but he turned it around straight away. I couldn't have been more impressed. His performance at Chelsea, his goal at Chelsea were just world class. You know, he proved he can do it against the bigger side. I know there's people that still have their doubts about him, but and I was one of them uh, straight after the Burnley game last season. I, I think I called his performance pretty disgraceful, but yeah, he's completely proved a lot of people wrong over the last 12 months. And for me, he's fully deserving to be Liverpool captain for this season. And um, wouldn't it be great if alongside Henderson was Naby Keita, the Red Bull Leipzig midfielder who we all want to see at Anfield. We've all seen the videos, we've all seen what he can do. We all know he's got the defensive and the offensive side of his game, which very few midfielders in the Premier League have at such a high level which he has. Obviously if he does join for £70 million or anything around that region he will be thrust straight into the team and I think he'll be alongside Jordan Henderson and doesn't get much more solid or dynamic than that. Okay in front of those two in midfield now as much as I love Gini 
Adam, as much as I adore Adam Alana, I think they're two absolutely wonderful players. You need to be playing Philip Coutinho and you need to be playing him from deep. We got a glimpse of this towards the end of last season when he dropped it even deeper than he does when he plays on the left hand side of the front three. Played that gorgeous ball through to Daniel Sturridge at West Ham and that's just exactly what he's capable of. He's great when he's got the whole play in front of him. He can bring the ball forward, dribble him with just so much control of the ball, so much skill, acceleration, and his passing accuracy and his chance creation just seems to be so much better and so much more effective when he's deeper. It also makes him much more difficult for defenders to pick up if he's in the middle of the park with a bit of a free roll, he can drift out to either side. He's not being asked to cover going backwards on the left, especially if you've got Milner over there, he might get a bit exposed at times. In the home games, we're pretty much being orthodox number 10 in behind the striker, but maybe in away games, he can sit in a bit deeper. But he is Liverpool's best player and he needs to have as much creativity and freedom as humanly possible. Okay, on the wings, obviously, is Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane. Now, which side they play, I'd start Salah on the right and start Mane on the left, but they can pretty much just switch over and do whatever they want throughout the whole game. Just keep, keep switching sides, keep confusing the defenders. They just got so much pace. I mean, it's the dream wing duo, it really is. I, I can't ask for anything more. They've got so much pace, so much end product. I think it's one of the most exciting things about this upcoming season is seeing how those two are going to work together. The counter attack is just going to be ridiculous. I mean, teams are obviously going to sit in to avoid having to deal with them on the break, but I think just the way our tempo is going to be with those two, if you allow any sort of space in behind, even if you're penned into your own box, they will exploit it because they're not just full of pace, they're full of quality. They've got quick feet with the ball as well as just having pace. They've got so much to their game and I'm just dead excited to see them and I think everybody wants those two to be starting together rather than one or the other. And up front, Roberto Firmino will retain his place as far as I'm concerned. I love Daniel Sturridge, I'm delighted it looks like he's going to stay, but Roberto Firmino was really good for us last season. He may not have scored as many goals as you'd want from a number nine if you're going to challenge for the league, but he does drop deep and bring other players into play. His control is wonderful, his intelligence is just outstanding for a number nine. And even if he does tend to drop a little bit deeper and play a bit closer to Coutinho in the midfield, then you've just got Mane and Salah on either side who are just going to bomb on and basically become a front two at times. It's just going to be such a fluid front three. I think it's just going to be one of the most exciting teams to watch in the league next season. And I'm back in Firmino to score 20 goals. I really am. I think he's going to get some outrageous service, especially with Kaito, who's got so much creativity in there. All the pace and energy we're going to have in that team as long as everyone stays fit is going to be frightening. So there we have it. It's Mignolet, Klein, Matip, Van Dijk, Milner, Kaito, Henderson, Coutinho, Salah, Mane and Bobby Firmino. That leaves you with plenty of options on the bench. We're going to have finally a bench which has loads going forward. We're going to have, as long as they stay fit, Daniel Sturridge, Gini Van Adam, Adam Lallana, maybe Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. You're going to have Andrew Robertson there as an option. Divock Origi is going to be still around. I think Woodburn and Trent Alexander-Arnold will get games, but they're not going to be our go-to guys off the bench like they were at times last season, which is just a relief. Emery Chan, of course, I think he's going to have a big part to play this season. Hopefully you can get a new deal with him locked in. You can never count on Henderson's fitness, and there were quite a few injuries last season, and obviously, with Champions League football, we're going to be playing our full team in midweek. It's going to be a 22-23 man squad, all of quality players. But I hope we're going to sign all the players that I've mentioned there. And this is the 11 that I would pick. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. Leave a comment with your 11 that you want to see Liverpool line up with when we play Watford away on that opening weekend. Have you got the same 11 as me? Do you disagree? Do you want Andrew Robertson at left back? Do you want to drop Henderson and maybe keep Alana or Van Alden in there? Like, it, it feels ridiculous that like I'm dropping Alana and Van Alden. Maybe even just dropping one of them just feels bizarre. Alana was just quality, but who do you? Who else do you drop out? I mean, Jordan Henderson is so important to this team. Kite is on the verge of world class. It's going to be a great problem to have. But yeah, let me know your thoughts and follow my other socials. It's Ben Might Say on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook. And I'll see you next time.